from Berlin, Germany, it's theCUBE. Covering DataWorks Summit Europe 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Well, hello and welcome to theCUBE. I'm James Kobielus. I'm the lead analyst for Big Data Analytics within the Wikibon team of Silicon Angle Media. I'm hosting theCUBE this week at DataWorks Summit 2018 in Berlin, Germany. It's been an excellent event. Uh, uh, Hortonworks, the host, had, uh, uh, we've, we've completed two days of keynotes. They made an announcement of uh, the Data Steward Studio as the latest of their offerings and demonstrated it this morning for, you know, to, to address GDPR compliance, uh, which of course is hot and heavy. It's coming down on, on uh, enterprises both in the EU and around the world, including in the US, uh, and the May 25th deadline is fast approaching. Uh, one of Hortonworks' uh, prime partners is IBM. And today on this CUBE segment we have Mandy Chessel. Mandy is a distinguished engineer at IBM who did an excellent uh, keynote yesterday all about metadata and metadata management. Mandy, you're great to have you. Hi, thank you. So I wonder if you can just reprise or summarize the main takeaways from your keynote yesterday on metadata and, and its role in, com in GDPR compliance and so mm -hmm. forth, and in the broader strategies that enterprise uh, 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 customers mm -hmm. have regarding managing their data in this new multi-cloud world where Hadoop and yeah. open source co uh, platforms are critically important for storing and processing data. So Mandy, go ahead. Sure, so <coughs> metadata is not new. I mean, it's basically information about data. And a lot of companies are trying to build a data catalog, which is not a catalog of you know, actually containing their data, it's a catalog that describes their data. Is it different from an index or a glossary? How's a catalog different from that? Yeah, those? so a catalog actually <coughs> includes both. So it is a list of all the data sets, plus a links to glossary definitions of what those, mm -hmm. those data items mean within right. the data sets, plus information about the lineage of the data. Mm -hmm. It includes information about who's using it, what they're using it for, how it should be governed. It's like a governance repository. It, so governance is part of it. So it, the governance part is really saying, this is how you're allowed to use it, this is how the data is classified, this is the, these are the automated actions that are going to happen on the data as it's used within the operational environment. Yes. So um, there's that aspect to it, but there is the collaboration side. Hey, I've, I've been using this data set, it's great, or actually this data set's full of errors, we can't, we can't use it. So you've got feedback, to data set owners, as well as um, exchange and collaboration between data scientists working with the data. So it's it's really, it is a central resource for an organization that has uh, a strong data strategy, is interested in becoming a data-driven organization as mm. such. So, you know, this becomes their major catalog of their data assets and how they're using it. So when a regulator comes in and says, can you show up, show me that you're managing personal data, the, the data catalog will have the information about um, where personal data is located, what type of infrastructure it's sitting on, how it's being used by different services. So they can really show that they know what they're doing. And then from that, they can show how the processes are using the metadata um, in order to um, use the data appropriately day to day. So Apache Atlas, so it's basically a catalog, if I understand correctly, at least for mm -hmm. IBM and Hortonworks, it's Hadoop, it's Apache Atlas, and Apache Atlas is essentially a metadata open source code open base. Source, that yes, is, yes. So explain what Atlas is in this context. Yeah. And so, so yes, At Atlas is a collection of code, um, but we it supports a server, um, a graph-based metadata server, it also supports a graph-based metadata, metadata server. server. Yes. I'm sorry. So explain what you mean by graph-based in this context. Okay. So so it runs uh, using the Janus Graph graph repository, uh, and this is very good for metadata because if you think about what it is, it's connecting dots. It's basically saying this data set means this value um, and needs to be classified in this way. And like this a semantic knowledge graph. It is. Yes, okay. actually. And um, and on top of it, we impose a type system that describes the different types of things you need to control and manage in a data catalog. Um, but the graph, so so it, the, the Atlas um, component gives you that graph-based, uh, um, yes, sorry, this graph-based repository underneath. Yeah. Um, but on top, we've built what we call the open metadata and governance libraries. They run inside Atlas, so when you run Atlas, you will have all the open metadata um, interfaces. But you can also take those libraries and, and connect them and load them actually into another vendor's product. 
And what they're doing is allowing metadata to be exchanged between repositories of different types. Mm. And this becomes incredibly important as an organization increases their maturity in their use of data, because you can't just have knowledge about data in a single server. Um, it just doesn't scale. You need to get that knowledge into every runtime environment, into the data tools that people are using across the organization. And Ma so it needs to be distributed. Mandy, I'm wondering, um, the whole notion of what you catalog in that repository, does it include, or does Apache Atlas support adding metadata relevant to data derivative assets like machine learning models absolutely. and so forth? Absolutely, so we have base types in the open metadata layer, but also it's a very flexible, extensible type system, so if you've got a specialist machine learning um, model that needs additional information stored about it, mm -hmm. that can easily be added to the runtime environment. Um, and, then, and then it will be managed through the open metadata protocols as if it was part of the native type system. Because one of the, uh, one of, the of course, as an analyst, uh, one of my core areas is artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. and one of the hot themes in artificial intelligence, well there's a broad umbrella called uh, AI safety. Yeah. And one of the core uh, subsets of that is something called explicable AI, mm -hmm. being able to, alg to, to <coughs> identify the lineage of a given algorithmic decision back to what machine learning models, uh, fed from what data, yeah. drove what action, like, like when it, say a self-driving yeah. vehicle hits a human being for legal mm -hmm. you know, discovery, whatever. So what I'm getting at, what I'm working through to is the extent to which um, the Hortonworks IBM big data catalog mm -hmm. running a, a Atlas can be a foundation for explicable AI mm -hmm. either now or in the future. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of enterprise, at least me as an analyst at least, sees lots of enterprises that are exploring this topic, but it's not to the point where it's in production, explicable mm -hmm. AI, but where it, it's it clearly, Companies like mm -hmm. IBM are exploring building a stack or whatever, uh, an mm -hmm. architecture for doing this kind of thing in a standardized way. What are your thoughts there? Is, what, is IBM working on bringing, say, Atlas and the overall big data catalog into that kind of a use case? Yes, yeah, so if you think about what's required, you need to understand the data that was used to train the AI, how, what data's been fed to it since it was deployed, because that's going to change its behavior. And then also a view of how that data is going to change in the future, so you can start to anticipate issues that might be arising from the from the, the model's changing behaviour. Um, and this is where the data catalog can actually associate and maintain information about the data that's being used with the um, algorithm. Hmm. You can also associate the checking mechanism that's constantly monitoring the profile of the data, so you can see where the data is changing hmm. um, over time. That will obviously affect the impact. Um, the uh, behavior of the uh, machine learning model. So it's really about providing not just information about the model itself, but also the data that's feeding it, how those characteristics are changing over time, so that you know the model is continuing to work into the future. So tell us about the IBM Hortonworks partnership on mm -hmm. metadata and so forth. Okay. How is that evolving? So, um, you know, your, your partnership is fairly tight. Um, and clearly, you've got ODPI, mm -hmm. you've got the work that you're doing mm -hmm. related to the big data catalog. What, what can we expect to see in the near future in terms of build, initiatives building on all of that yeah. for governance of big data yeah. in the multi-cloud environment? Yeah, so Hortonworks started uh, the Apache Atlas project um, a couple of years ago with uh, a number of their customers. And they built um, a base repository um, and a set of APIs that allow it to work in the Hadoop environment. Uh, we came along last year um, and formed our partnership. That partnership includes um, um, this open metadata and governance layer. So since then, um, we work with ING as well, and ING uh, bring the sort of user perspective. This is you know this is the organization's use of uh, the data, um, and so between the three of us, we are basically transforming Apache Atlas from and a Hadoop-focused metadata repository to an enterprise-focused mm. metadata repository, plus enabling other vendors to connect into the open metadata ecosystem. So we're standardizing types, standardizing format, the format of metadata. Mm. There's a protocol for exchanging metadata between repositories. Mm. Um, and this is all coming from that 
a three-way partnership where you've got a consuming organization, you've got a company who's used to building enterprise middleware, and you've got uh, Hordenworks with their knowledge of open source development and the Hadoop environment. There's a question so on left field. As you yeah. develop this architecture, mm -hmm. clearly you're leveraging Hadoop HDFS for storage. Are you looking into at least evaluating maybe using blockchain for more distributed management of the metadata <laughs> in these heterogeneous so. environments in the multi-cloud, yeah. or not? So, so Atlas itself doesn't does run on HDFS, but doesn't need to run on HDFS. It's got other storage environments so that we can run it outside of Hadoop. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to blockchain, so blockchain is uh, for uh, sharing data between partners, small amounts of data that basically express agreements. So it's yes. like a ledger. Uh, there are some aspects of um, that we could use for metadata management. It's more that we actually need to put metadata management into blockchain. So the agreements and contracts that are stored in blockchain are only meaningful if we understand the data that's there, yeah. what it's, you know, its quality, where it came from, what it means. And so actually there's a very interesting distributed metadata question that comes with the blockchain technology. Mm. Um, and uh, I, think, I think that's a, an important area of research. Well, Mandy, we're at the end of our time. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We could go on and on. Mm -hmm. You're a true expert, and it's great to have you on theCUBE. Thank, Thank you for you inviting much. me. So this is James Kabilos with Mandy Chesel of IBM. We are here this week in Berlin at DataWorks Summit 2018. It's uh, a great event, and we have some more interviews coming up. So thank you very much for tuning in.